that 1930s guy here recording from the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. And straight ahead, you are looking at the Valley of the Sun, famous for Arizona's capital, Phoenix, which is, if you can see, downtown is right around there. It is a bit hazy because uh, it's a bit humid this time of year in Arizona. It's the monsoon season, or so-called, because they do get uh, rain and humidity. But today, we're going to talk about, obviously, stories from the 30s. This beautiful landscape around me. And we're going to talk about several stories from this county just to the south of where Phoenix is in Maricopa County. is Pinal County. Much less populated, very growing fast, though. But uh, in the 30s, there was some New Deal projects that took place there. And interesting story about what happens when Depression-era budget cuts hit a uh, state prison in Pinal County. Uh, it's going to be a good story about that. And it should be uh, it's interesting to note that in the 30s, Arizona had only been a state for about 20 years. It became a state in um, this day, 1912. And it was the youngest of states until Alaska became a state, January 4th, I believe it's the 4th, in 1959. That was the next state. So there was a good period where Arizona held the title for youngest state, most recent state. And it was still... Um, very uh, rugged state. Uh, it's not very populated till after World War II, big boom in Phoenix right ahead of me here after that. Before that, this valley, the Sun Valley, the Santan Valley, which is over here, I was pointing to, or in Pinal County, uh, was an agricultural region that grew fruits, vegetables, and cotton. And there was uh, some government investment here. We're going to talk about that and talk about some other things that happened in uh, the 1930s Arizona as it was famous. A top spot to get married for Hollywood stars. They would fly over to Arizona. I'll explain why in a little bit. So you're going to want to stay tuned and hear some of these good stories from the West. Here in I am standing actually in the Santan Mountains Santan Regional Park. Stay tuned. I am now in historic downtown Florence, Arizona. It definitely has an Old West feel to it. The town was founded in 1866. It's pretty old. It's the county seat of Pinal County, where my first uh, story will take place. And in 1937, to start with, there was uh, what they called the Roosevelt Recession or the recession within the Depression when uh, unemployment, which had been steadily going down since 1933, suddenly spiked up. Uh, business went down. Uh, and the country fell into a recession, even though unemployment still re remained above 10% uh, in 1937. It jumped back up to about 17 to 20%, depending on where you were in the country. And to this day, there's still arguments over what caused it. Uh, some people like to say it was the cutting of the New Deal programs, which definitely happened. Um, but I, from my opinion, it wasn't uh, enough to cause that big of a problem. Uh, others blame it on uh, union issues because the Wagner Act uh, gave, in 1935 gave unions a lot of power. And the beginning of the National Labor Relations Board, uh, they were very uh, biased towards unions in uh, mediations between companies and unions. And so a lot of companies were worried about expanding at this time because of the uh, growing power of unions, which continuously had the backing of the government. But whatever the case is, whatever uh, case you want to make, 
there was definitely a recession and it hit places like Arizona and in the, the town of Florence there was a state prison and the Arizona legislature cut the budget dramatically because of decreased revenues from the recession and the state prison they caused a major cut down in guards and it caused some serious problems and I am going to go to where the prison is it's still there to this day uh, of course it's been remade but uh, it's changed of course a lot but we're gonna go to where the prison is I'm gonna tell you what happened with these uh, budget cuts I am now at the Arizona State Prison Complex in Florence, uh, just slightly uh, east of downtown where I just was. And in the summer of 1938, and you can see some of these buildings do actually look pretty old. Uh, they might have been around in the 30s, I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, in the summer of 1938, the budget cuts forced this prison to go down to just 16 guards. Uh, by the end of June, there were 16 guards for 739 prisoners. And so as you can imagine, uh, escapes started to become pretty numerous. Uh, during the summer of 1938, there was about five escapes per week. Uh, there was 18 alone, 18 escapes alone in the first two weeks of July. Uh, just because there just was not enough guards to control. Uh, and, you know, there were all kinds of convicts here. They were, they were murderers for sure. There was one guy, uh, a murderer, who was able to steal a gun from a guard and escape. His name was James Bailey. He was later caught, but it just goes to show <laughs> the lawlessness of what happened here. Uh, it was called an epidemic of escapes and the governor of the state at the time uh, he uh, uh, acknowledged that there was a problem but he said he said there was nothing he could do about it because the legislature voted for these cuts and then went on their long recess for the year and he said unless he called this a uh, special session there was nothing that he could do about it they were just gonna have to deal with it and that's what they did well, at least until July, uh, July 21st, they actually, he, the governor called the National Guard in because there was just so much lawlessness going on at this prison. So they, they needed some, some kind of protection. So they, uh, the National Guard took over the prison and uh, they had to use uh, tear gas and do a number of times in order to get the uh, prisoners under control. And uh, it was quite, quite a crazy time uh, at this uh, prison we're looking at right now in Florence. And yeah, it was, it was pretty much a wild west. There's actually the governor, even before he did the, called the National Guard, he, he called a state of martial law just for the prison in Florence and so it was it was pretty chaotic interesting story about uh, what happens in when you cut the budget a little too much uh, for safety and the next stop we're going to talk about some New Deal program influences uh, WPA work that was uh, started that uh, changed this area for the better uh, so let's go ahead towards that area I am now in the town of Casa Grande, Arizona, at the uh, 
Historical Society run museum, but it's unfortunately closed for the summer, but that's okay. Uh, this is a town about 40 minute drive west of the Florence, the county seat of Pinal County where we're at. And this has this town has several connections to the 1930s that are important. One is this road right here that I took to get here. Arizona State Highway 287, which was the first paved highway in the state of Arizona. Entirely paid for by New Deal dollars from Washington, D.C. And it was uh, one of many projects in this area. Most of them were agricultural based. And this was one of the, the big ones they had here in Casa Grande. Because uh, a lot of migrants came here from the Central Plains escaping the Dust Bowl to look for farm work. Uh, California got the bulk of those migrants, but some did come here to Arizona. Like I said, they grew vegetables and fruits and whatnot here, and they built, the federal government funded a huge cooperative of farm bonanza. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, oh, over here. Uh, they set up housing, they set up cooperative stores, and they set up a whole bunch of, of farms for to grow fruit and vegetables in this area. Employed a whole bunch of people. And it was centered right here in Casa Grande. I am now in Chandler, Arizona, a suburb of Phoenix, but it is uh, another spot where there was a big New Deal program for housing and cooperative farming. And that was getting kind of windy right now. The storm's kind. But uh, there's a great uh, exhibit just exactly about the, the New Deal programs that were in this area. So I'm going to check that out right now. Here inside the Chandler Museum it is a very timely exhibit about the Dust Bowl migrants I was talking about that went to this area. Let's take a look at some of the stuff. Here is a setup of a residence in one of the Chandler farms. You can see uh, some kitchen artifacts here but you can see how small and the family had to actually live and eat and everything in this small little shack. Here's a car that a Dust Bowl migrant would have been driving in. It's a great example. I'll take a look on the inside for you. Imagine having to cram all your home goods in a car like this. It wasn't an easy choice to leave their farms, but they really, some people really had uh, almost no choice because they just couldn't grow food anymore. Some photos of what Chandler area looked like in the 1930s. Here's a great aerial view. You can see all the farms in the relatively small town area. Uh, like a lot of uh, agricultural places, uh, there was a boom during the First World War and then afterward, especially when cotton prices crashed in the 20s, they lost, actually lost people until the Great Depression brought the migrants from the Dust Bowl round. One of the things the New Deal helped do in this area was to build housing for people especially here in Chandler. And here's an example of uh, some of the government housing. Here's 
here's a big image of some of the uh, less comfortable housing. These were some of the barracks that the farmers lived in around Chandler. And two of the children here. And this over here explains how the some of these cooperative structures, uh, when things got better economically in the 40s, uh, pretty much dissolved themselves because people wanted to uh, uh, live more uh, individual life and not have to share things with people like they did during these uh, government programs. And uh, I'll post a picture of this so you can read the whole thing later. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of projects they had around this area, and this map perfectly shows that right here, including the Casa Grande Farms that we were just talking about. And this exhibit, I'm very impressed with it, really explains uh, what was going on here during the New Deal uh, very concisely. It's got plenty of artifacts from the farms that were here and some just great exhibits really. I will end this video at a little obscure historical marker here in a uh, Arizona suburbs, uh, kind of on the border of the town of uh, Queen Creek and Gilbert. But uh, here it is a Desert Wells stage stop. Now this predates the 30s, I know, but it was a little interesting anecdote I wanted to add. As this, uh, we are in a little bit of a rainstorm here, actually, in the desert, which uh, you don't see too often. But anyway, this little area here was a rest stop for a stagecoach line, which went from Florence, where we started the video, to uh, Mesa, going through Phoenix also. And this was a, a well where the humans and their animals for the stagecoach would get water and re kind of refresh themselves in the shade of a little building that used to be here. But you know, this is uh, all that's left are these ruins. It was it was started in 1868. Uh, it said, and uh, it actually went all the way to 1916 before they finally shut it down. It was still in use up until that point, World War One era. <laughs> but again, I mean, 1960, four years after Arizona became a state, it was still a territory up until 1912. And the other thing I wanted to add, which I mentioned earlier in the video, was Arizona was well known as a marriage hotspot for Hollywood stars. Uh, other people from California probably went too, because in Arizona they had a law where you, you could get married immediately after you got a marriage license. There was no waiting period like most states had. Even though California's was only three days, it really wasn't that long. But some people wanted to get married immediately uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, I mean, they had stricter laws about marriage back then. Uh, a lot of uh, hotels wouldn't allow a man and a woman to stay if they weren't married in the same room. And it's little things like that just to make it uh, legal. And the state catered to it. Yuma was a popular spot down in the southeastern, uh, a western, southwestern corner of the state. Uh, a lot of celebrities got married there. Gloria Swanson, Marjorie Rambo, Arlene Judge comes to mind. I might actually do a video about Arlene Judge. She's an interesting um, B-movie actress from the 30s, but has a great story. But she uh, she was actually born only a, well, exactly one week after Arizona became a state. She was born on uh, the second, no, 21st of February, uh, 1912. Arizona became a state on the 14th. But anyway... Um, 
They were so uh, used to this in Huma that their um, uh, county government house uh, had the marriage license uh, area on one, hall, one side of the hallway, and then right down the hallway they had the pe justice of the peace that can get you married, and it was a, make it a very quick, easy process. And uh, it was popular, especially before the uh, prohibition was repealed, because it was right on the Mexican border, so you could get married in Yuma, cross the border and have a party. I mean, you could still drink in the United States illegally, of course, but it was easier to just cross the border and have a legal party, I guess. And so, uh, Nevada was famous for their divorces because they had very easy divorce uh, laws, a two-week residency, and you could get divorced for any reason. In most states, you had to prove something happened in order to get a divorce. You couldn't just get it because you felt like it. But anyway, that's a different, whole different story to get into. But uh, it's just another interesting fact about Arizona in the 30s being a marriage uh, hotbed of the country. And I hope you enjoyed these uh, interesting 30s facts about the 1930s in Arizona. Uh, even though it was a relatively new state, there was still a lot of history that took place here. And it's um, always uh, interesting, little interesting facts to find about the 1930s, no matter where you look. But I hope you enjoyed the ones that we talked about in this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you.